you mind just introducing yourself real quick? Yeah, of course. So I'm Wilf Mann. Um, I went to university with uh, with James. Um, we both studied sport business management. And uh, I graduated that with like an upper two one, and um, I'm now doing a master's like football scholarship in the US in Pennsylvania at Seton Hall University. That's brilliant. So it was one of the things like I knew yourself from obviously being on the same course, or whatever. Yeah, of course. And yeah. like I saw yourself sort of traveling over and just thought, wow, that's pretty cool. So I'm, yeah, thinking, I'm working so, currently yeah. as an intern within Athletes USA, a lot of sort of the marketing scouting side, especially on the UK bit. I just yeah, thought that's, cool. that's something that is really yeah. worth talking to. For sure, how yeah. Did, how did it kind of come about? Like, yeah, so um, kind of, yeah, yeah. So I kind of heard of the um, the whole US scholarships like for for years now, and it's always been like one of those things. Like, wouldn't that be amazing? And then um, over lockdown, when I was back at home for a while, <clears throat> excuse me, um, um, a friend of mine actually became a scout for a company, and so I kind of at that point really did like look into it and thought like I could actually probably do this. So I spoke to him, got in contact with the um, the organisation itself, like the agency. And then um, from there, just like slowly, just like learn more about it. Cause obviously I told my parents about it and they're like, we had to pay like 2000 pounds or 1500 pounds to like do this. It just sounds like really like quite skeptical initially. And then I had meetings with them and then um, they told me what I needed to do. Like the stuff, different stuff I had to like um, collect myself. So I needed like a lot of footage of me playing. Mm. Um, so I developed that over the year and then I had eventually like a portfolio of myself essentially. So you kind of like market yourself to, the coaches, which is what the, the, the agencies I like, reach out for. And mm -hmm. then I got a few offers based on that. And then, yeah, here I am. Here you are. So yeah. whereabouts, um, whereabouts actually are you at the minute? What's the name of the yeah. college university? Yeah, so the university is called Seton Hill. Um, and it's mm -hmm. in Pennsylvania, like more specifically Greensburg, which isn't far from Pittsburgh. So mm -hmm. Greensburg is like quite a fairly small town, but like it's got everything you need in it really. Like it, it, it does all does all the things it needs. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty cool place actually, and I live off campus. Um, now typically people would tend to do like they finish college and then do their undergrad here. Obviously, mm -hmm. as a graduate, I was able to get like an off-campus house with like three other lads who own a soccer team as well. So it's pretty oh, ideal. Nice. Really good bunch of people. Yeah, mate, We're getting along with them really well. I just realised I need to uh, stop calling it soccer as well because uh, <laughs> yeah, a that's that. a good point. So um, I I'm still struggling with the transition. It's it's just football here, isn't it? It's not it's not soccer, but yeah. I mean, the thing is, we're now football here, targeting to a different people, audience, aren't we? Yeah, people people think like I'm a uh, like an American football player, and then they look at me they're like, N not a chance, mate. I call it soccer to avoid the confusion. <laughs> so how how long have you been playing football slash soccer? Kind of yeah, a little so bit I about your background within that. Uh, or, um, yeah, played like for like, clubs all the way like all the way through school, everything. And then um, right when I was like about I think at ten or eleven, I played for um, at Hereford United. That's like, I'm from Hereford. I went to the university in Leeds, but I'm originally from Herefordshire. And uh, the Hereford United is like the professional club there. So I was like in there, um, in there kind of <clears throat> youth setup for a number of years. And then I went to like the likes of like West Brom, Bristol City. Like, I had a few things there, and eventually started playing club football again for like a local team. personally enjoying it and like and I learned a lot from playing for my club level played a lot of adults football quite early on developed like a lot of experience in that and then at university I kind of my first year I kind of like didn't really do much I just kind of parted the whole time I didn't want to play too much football so I kind of chilled for a year then and towards the end um, I actually picked up futsal because my mm. one of my flatmates played for the team and they needed a few players so I came down and started playing that played that through my second year as well and then it was, the, I think it was between second and third year where that COVID initially hit. So that's when I was at home and I learned about like the possibility of doing this like master's scholarship. So um, that's when I joined the team in Leeds called Ilkley, who um, they record all their games. So that I needed the footage to, I, I guess, uh, market myself a bit better. And then so I played for them to acquire some footage. And that was through my third year. And then, and then kind of had the summer at home and then, and then I came over here, yeah. So That's I've always been playing football, yeah, since, since I can remember, honestly. So it's been like a big part of my life. And now to actually have something from it, it makes it all worthwhile. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. So how would you compare football to futsal? Because I remember you sort of playing yeah. futsal. I watched a little bit of it just because of overlap mm -hmm. of training times. How would you say yeah, yeah, that yeah. the two compared? Yeah, it's actually really interesting, that like, difference. Like futsal is is so intense and like high paced and just crazy. Like 
you'd be on the pitch for five minutes of the game and you just like you come off dripping in sweat because like roll on roll off subs because it's so tight it's so intense um football um it's just it's, it's a lot different in terms you need intelligence in both sports but in different ways so like futsal is just like high intensity like transitions are crazy like you, you defend your attack you defend your attack like it's really intense <clears throat> and inter interestingly enough I was speaking to my friend and saying I actually compared the soccer or football over here um, to futsal because basically you have for a, for a game over here you have a squad of 25 plus players and it's roll on roll off subs and in America because like in general <clears throat> they're not as good technically which is why they get internationals they're incredibly fit so like you get 25, 30 lads in a, in a team for a game who are all incredibly fit, roll on, roll off subs, and it's just like intense, intense. The whole, no one tires because it's so up. So it's like, it kind of reminds me of futsal because you never get a break. It's so relentless. It's crazy, yeah. Absolutely. Um, but, yeah, but football like in the UK is a lot more, it's a bit more like a relaxed, not relaxed, but like a little bit of a slower intensity. So it's taken me a while to like kind of get used to it over here. Hmm. Um but yeah, there's certainly a big difference between futsal and football. But um, like American or well, soccer in America is um, is kind of does relate a little bit to futsal. So having that experience probably helped me out a little bit. Definitely, it's like would you say in terms of play styles mm -hmm. that America being a little bit more up, up tempo, a little bit more physical? Would you say that that is almost a challenge that you sort of look forward to a little bit more? Or would you just say yeah, it's just yeah. different to compare the two? No, it's definitely a challenge because I, I came here and I, I settled in quite well and I, I was playing quite well. And then when they actually started, because I was in the preseason game, I was playing quite well. And we started the um, the conference game. So you have, so not conference, you have regional games and conference games. Conference is basically like the league you have. Um, and the regional ones, you just play different sides from around like your region. And if you don't do as well in your conference, you're a good regional record. Like if you do well in regional games, could still make you go through to the knockouts etc so not necessarily as important but uh, those games I found like I, I just I wasn't playing as well and like I was just it was so intense and I had a bit of a bad run of games and and it was, it was, it was, it was a challenge every day to like wake up and be like right and like, how I can I kind of like affect my game in order to adapt to this um so it was definitely a, a new challenge um but I, I think now as time's gone on like I, I've known I've been watching about my like my own footage um, and and I've been able to like adapt my game in order to to um, like suit this style of play better, which is it's definitely like an interesting challenge. Uh, it was a bit frustrating at times, you know, like you watch back and you're like, oh, like I could have done this, I could have done this. But as long as like, I'm progressing as a player, which I feel like I have already, like it's it's definitely like, it's much better to be outside of your comfort zone than just be like cruising through it all. So yeah, it's been like a great experience so far, um, trying to adapt to the, the play over here. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. How have you balanced playing football alongside student life? Like, how often are you training? What's your sort of lectures and seminar schedule like? Yeah, yeah. So for me personally, I'm quite lucky. I don't know like why it's so different over here, but graduate school seems to be like the most relaxed thing ever. Like, uh, I think the idea is you're supposed to work alongside doing grad school, but mm -hmm. I've not got a social security number. I'm not an American citizen, so legally I can't actually do any work. If I had a social security number. I'm trying to get right now I could work on campus for 20 hours a week but I can't work off campus um so I'm literally just got my grad school and, and like football right now um and I've only got one class a week uh, I, I, I have two or three classes but um two of them are online and one of them's in person mm. so I've only got one actual in-person um like lecture I guess it, it kind of is and that's like six or ten on a Tuesday other than that uh, I've got like training every day so we normally do like in the preseason, we trained twice a day and it was super intense, so much running. But now we play games pretty much Wednesday, Saturday, like every week. So we we train Monday, uh, have, a, have a, like a relaxed one Tuesday before the game, like in preparations, discussing like what the team's like. Then we'll see Wednesday's game day. Thursday, we often have off after a game day. Friday, um, we come back into training, but also with the game Saturday, it's not too intense. So like during the season, there's less training and in general, less stuff for me to be doing. So... I've been like fairly on top of my work, you know, been watching like a lot of Netflix, a lot of time uh, to be chilling and stuff, which is nice. Um, it's but a lot I, of downtime for you. Yeah, which I've yeah. enjoyed, mate. Um, yeah, so it, balancing the two has not been difficult. Like my friends have got a lot more classes than I've got. Like, um, so as a grad student, definitely like it's, it's, it's really easy to balance the two. And it means I can put a lot into, into my recovery and like my like performance. So 
I've got a lot of time to like do yoga or stretch in the morning, do like recovery. So I'm not feeling as fatigued. And yes, yeah, so, so like it's been a real good balance for me because obviously it's my first year here and to be able to settle in and just like find my feet a little bit, it's been, it's been ideal. Yeah. It's been great. How long is your master's degree for? The reason of why it's so, I guess, easy right now for me is because um, I'm doing it over 24 months. So you mm -hmm. can do it over 12. Um, but I wanted to play two seasons and it just felt like I would have less academic stress and get more out of my football if I was to do it that way. So I've got two years over here. Um, and so it's, it's, all, it's all pretty chill right now. Good stuff. Um, so yeah, I'm guessing season all up and running. A few games under <laughs> your belt now. Yeah, yeah. So we played uh, three, they call them scrimmages over here, but just essentially friendly. We played three of those. And then we played, I think, five, um, like, as, as I mentioned before, it's like the regional games. Mm -hmm. And then now we've got actually nine days off before our next game. Um, and then the following game after that one is our first, so it's called, our conference is called PSAC, which is like, because I'm in Pennsylvania, it's like the P, and I'm not sure exactly how it, it's worked, but like, it's like the Pennsylvania area is split into two um, different leagues. I think there's seven teams in each one. Mm -hmm. And um, we have to come, if you come top three, so the first team uh, gets a bye to the next round to the play, and they play the winner of the second and third playoff game. Uh, so if you come second or third, you have to play an extra game, and then that follow the team who came first. So coming first is a huge advantage because you get a week's rest rather than like three days. Okay, uh, what would you say has been the biggest challenge mm -hmm. from yourself playing, studying in the UK, going over to the States? Okay, it's a good question. So um, I might have to think about that just for a, a second, just so I can get a, an accurate idea. Um, <clears throat> i say so initially when I first got here, mm -hmm. I found it difficult. So we did our fitness test on the first day and the idea was, because um, it's it a, big, a big thing about fitness because the season's so, you start so quickly and it's so short. Um, you have to come and you have to be like your top fitness levels already. So we have a fitness test called the Man United um, Running Test. Mm -hmm. And and so that was done the first day and that was like incredibly intense. Like, and it was, <clears throat> the climate over here is also very different. So adapting to that was quite a big challenge as well. Like it's very humid, very hot. So initially trying to do this fitness test, I came a week before, um, before we actually started our first training. I did it a few times. I had passed the test, but you can like go on to higher levels. Um, so I knew I was going to pass, but it just like adapting to the, the climate and training twice a day in that first week. So we did the fitness test in the morning, then train in the evening. Then the next day I woke up, my legs were so heavy and then trying to impress and trying to do your best in that first week was like, was really, really difficult to be fair. And I'd say that's probably the biggest challenge because obviously I was new to the whole the whole like system of it anyway. Mm. And then playing, waking up, having heavy legs and having to go and impress and and you know make yourself into the squad. It was was kind of difficult. Um, but I managed it and uh, I got into that, the the first team like um, initially and stuff. So and then now um, now the season started as I mentioned before, getting used to that change of intensity, just like being pretty much playing against a high press all game, just you know, no time on the ball. Uh, that was a big thing. Um, so obviously, like, for me personally, the, the, the soccer stuff is, like, it's huge for me out here. Like, that's why I'm essentially, like, the main reason I'm, I'm really here is to try and, like, further my, um, my like, soccer abilities and stuff. Um, obviously, I get Absolutely. A, um, yeah, a master's degree out of it as well, which is, you know, more than ideal. Um, but, yeah, so that initial challenge of where, because football is on your mind all the time. So, I'll go to bed, I'll be thinking, like, I'm thinking about the game, thinking about when I gave the ball away, thinking about what I did well. And, like, if, when you're playing, like, poorly and stuff, like, it can get quite overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And it's just about, like, focusing on the next game and you're coming thick and fast. You can't, you know, you can't um, dwell on things too much. Um, obviously, it's important to, you know, like, evaluate your performance, but you can't dwell on things too much because you've got a game in three days. So, um, but, yeah, getting used to that whole that whole lifestyle, um I mean, it's it's unbelievably fun. I'm not gonna lie, it's really like the whole lifestyle is just amazing. But um, mm. but getting used to the games coming thick and fast, training every day, it, it is quite it's, it's it's a challenge at times, but also so rewarding. You know what I mean? It is really good. Oh, absolutely. What would you say then has been the thing that you've enjoyed the most since being over to the states? I think just having the, the freedom to be able to play football all the time is just it's just incredible, really. Like, um, 
I think in general, people who come over here wouldn't have loads of work to be doing because it seems like the whole the whole system is like it's like it's it's different to the UK um, for sure. So like the academic system, for example, like you have like you have to be you get like marked on participation quite heavily. So as long as you're on top of your work every week, it's fine. But it's no like big assignments to do necessarily. Um, <clears throat> So I, I just sidetracked and forgot the question. <laughs> All right. What would you say has been like your favorite thing that you've, or the best yeah, part yeah. of being over in the state mm -hmm. so far? Yeah. So as, as I say, like the, the whole education side of being a bit relaxed for me has enabled me to focus completely on my football and just having the opportunity to pursue something like that, like not being a professional football player. Like it's just, it's just so like unbelievably lucky to be able to, to do that. And um and, and yeah, it's just like the dream lifestyle, honestly. It's like you wake up, you, you stretch a trash football player when, you, when you're not. So it's that, I mean, that's always been my dream as a kid. So uh, I guess that would be um, my favourite thing, just to have that feeling of being able to put everything into football, you know, and really feel like you, you, can, you can go somewhere with it. And it feels like almost like you are a professional football player. So, yeah, it's, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Living well, you're doing what you love, really, at the end of the day. No, exactly. you can't... I, I can't complain at all, honestly. It's, it's, it's great. Absolutely. How would you say that the standard compares to like, let's even say university standard in the UK compared to the standard that you're playing at at the States? Yeah, so that's a good question, actually, because um, it is certainly different um, and you get the odd good player over here. So in general, the international boys, like each team will have like quite a few of them. Mm. They vary from team to team. Um, and so for the, for the teams that have like a lot of Americans, they tend to be extremely fit. Those are the ones that are going to high press you all game, going to be relentless, going to be really hard working. But technically wise, you get the odd good player here and there. Like we've got, we've got a good side to be fair. Mm. Um, but in general, like the standard in terms of like player ability is probably lower than university football in the UK. Mm -hmm. But um, fitness wise, it's it's not even close. The people were crazy fit. Like you get a lot of track athletes because. A lot of players would be doing track and field and playing and playing football, so they're like in, insanely fit. And it's like that—that's the big difference. Is like um, it's just that relentless, you know, high press. Just that—that's the big difference. But in terms of technical ability, the UK standard is better, mm -hmm. um, which is it's interesting to get both because it's a different kind of like pressure having to deal with like having someone on your back at all times because you you learn to be quick on the ball. So it's like a, a different challenge, but. Um, it's definitely different in terms of how how the standard is, yeah, I'd say. Absolutely. So it's like, I remember with the Beckett team and sort of even club football or so, mm -hmm. the technical level is quite high, but the people, yeah. but the level of fitness you can just tell isn't quite... Yeah, level. that's it. Because it's a lot more relaxed in the UK. Like, you'll have a game and people will drink on the, on the bus back. But for Absolutely. us, we... Yeah, we we um we have rules where you can't drink twenty four hours before training. You can't drink seventy two hours before a game. So mm. if we've got a game on a Sunday and a game on a Wednesday, you're not allowed to drink. Um, so like because the season's so short, that these kind of things are quite important. But obviously the um the culture in the UK is so different. Like the boy, you'll see the boys in the Beckett bus and they they've got cider all like strapped to their hands and stuff. But for us, we're yeah. like, we have to way back or something. But um, we we get our chances to go out regardless of um. Like we get, for example, we've got nine days off now. So Saturday night, everyone, the first time, both teams, we have a second team as well. And they often have games when we've got time off. And so we get the odd night out here and there. Um, but Saturday is, is going to be a big one when everyone's free. because we've got no game at all this weekend. So mm. um, that, that's another difference, actually, is that um, is, is the whole drinking like culture. Because like I say in the UK, you finish if you have a big win, everyone goes out and gets like smashed. But you know, you can't really do it here because it's just a short and quick season. You know, like playing two games a week all all season for like a, a many weeks is like is obviously very tiring. So the little things of being like having a day where you're just in bed, hungover, isn't ideal in terms of um, recovery and stuff. So it makes sense, obviously. But yeah, that's yeah. another difference that I've found. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, how long actually is your season? Are you saying it's all condensed down? Yeah. So this is this is the interesting thing. Obviously, in England, you play like a weekly game, but here I, I say it's Wednesday, Saturday, um, mm. and it probably spans across like two months plus. If you have no it's more than that, it must be from like I think my first like uh, friendly game was August time, and then it could be up to um, 
November, I'd say probably like six to eight to 10 weeks, depending how far you get in terms of knockouts. Um, but we have, uh, I think, 12 conference games. Uh, and then obviously if we, we should get top three in our conference. And then from that, you have knockouts and it depends how far you go in terms of how many games actually play. Um, but yeah, it'll be like six to eight, possibly to 10 if you do very well, yeah. So it's, it's very short and very intense. So it, it, it's all it's all it really matters right now, yeah. It's very short. Because it's like here it would be well, September to May, potentially. Yeah, no, I exactly. Mean, it's crazy. University's a little bit cut down. It's sort of around, mm -hmm. what, October to March, April? Yeah. But it's, it's still, it's not even close, is it? No, wow. exactly, yeah. And it's just playing two games a week, just pretty much half the season. So I, I, I'm not sure if it's because people will go home. You can't really have it necessarily over Christmas and then to the New Year's. People are going home. They're all internationals. And maybe that's like an aspect of it. But um, I think our, our official season ends November 6th. And then after that is knockouts. So people could be just playing from like August to November, early November if they don't do, if they don't do well. That's Hopefully, true. Hopefully we won't be doing that, but um, yeah, certainly some teams will, will have a very, very short season. Yeah, that, it's a weird way of thinking about it, actually, isn't it? It's yeah. well, the worst you do with shorter your season is. But. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. And it's, it, it's took me a while to, um, to like, kind of understand the whole system because it is very different. Like normally, the things we were, we were like in America, they love the whole like judged up version of football. Like they love knockouts. They love like in, even in our um, regional games, we have. Night, like 90 minutes then you have golden goal like if it's a draw no penalty shootouts unless it's I think in the conference games mm -hmm. and then they have penalty shootouts but in these ones they give you golden goal just to try and make it like I don't know just a bit more entertaining because that's what that's what they like over here they like the whole like um like fancy version of, of sports and much more entertaining and stuff like that so it's interesting mm -hmm. playing um yeah a bit of a golden goal, like you're not even just extra time, but golden goal after a, a regular game is a bit strange, really. It's very much win or lose, isn't it? Yeah, things like it is. basketball, baseball it's going into that. overtime, yeah. extra innings, that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's literally. Yeah. I feel like in America, that's the big thing for them. They don't like things end in draws. They like it to be like really entertaining and like even like um, when the game's finishing, they count down from ten, just like the last ten seconds of the game, and uh, and it's like what's the chances that you're going to score in the last 10 seconds? Although we actually did score in three seconds to go in the game the other day, but wow. it's, it's quite fun. Yeah, it's quite fun when you score and, and you hear the turn no, and then you <laughs> score a goal. But it, it's just... It's shoot on sight happen. at that point. Yeah, it never happened in the UK, would it? No. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So finally, what would be your one best piece of advice for any aspiring football or soccer, as we've got to call it now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. For any aspiring soccer player wanting to go from the UK to the States, what would be your one best piece of advice? I would say um, just just put in the work before you, before you get here, make sure you're at the highest fitness and the highest fitness levels because for us, if you didn't pass a test, you're put in the second group. The first group then had a huge advantage in terms of getting into the first team because that was the team that was going to play in, in, the, um, in the first friendly. I need to set the bar really high for your coaches and set a good example. So if you're if you're coming in, don't don't um, don't just think, oh, I'll get that, I'll get fit, because you do you want to hit the ground running as soon as you get here. It's a short season, um, and just put the work in. Even even when you're here, like it's not worth um, messing around and stuff. Just just get your work done. You have next term to um, to enjoy yourself a bit more in terms of going out and a bit more a bit more free. But leading up to it, especially, just try and get as fit as you can. Um, and then when you're here, just give it everything you've got because it's a huge opportunity to um, to really like improve your your personal gain. Um, but also just, just enjoy yourself because it, it is honestly the dream lifestyle. You know, you're going to absolutely, if you have the opportunity to come out here, you're going to absolutely love it. So just, just make everything of it because the years will go by so quick, just like they did when I was at university in the UK. Um, so yeah, make make the most absolutely every, every part of it because it really is the opportunity of a lifetime. I think that's a great piece of advice. I completely agree with that. It, I mean, yeah, cheers, I've not <laughs> gone over to the states. I sort of stayed in the UK, um, but from yeah. my three from my three years, it's it really has flown by. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? Like you hear people say, "Well, you're in first year." Oh, I've got four years, and then all of a sudden, yeah, we're here uh, now. It's done. <laughs> yeah. yeah, crazy. Um, so, yeah. 
but yeah, no, thank you very much, mate, for today. Um, yeah, thank you for yeah, taking cool. the time out. I've thoroughly yeah. enjoyed it myself. Yeah, yeah, me too. It's been nice to have a little catch up. If you need me to repeat any questions, like in future when you're looking back at it, I'm, I'm happy to, you know, do whatever because I thought I did ramble a little bit at times, but oh, don't worry about it. No problem. But yeah, um, nice. yeah, best of luck for the rest of the season. Really good to yeah, talk to you, it. and yeah, all the best, mate. Yeah, take care. See you there. See you later.